So here I want to demonstrate how to create an object literal. To create an object uh, literal, we need to create a variable and we want to give it a name. This name here is going to be the name of our object. So we assign it like so with a um, with an opening and closing curly bracket there. And so if you were to do an alert on album in this case, then it would show you that this is an object, uh, which is a type of object. And you could do it with anything, variable, whatever name you want, equals the opening and closing cur curly bracket, and this is our object literal. Now, the difference between an object literal and a constructor object is that an object literal, um, it's an expression that creates and, and initializes a new uh, distinct object each time that it's created. You can do this with a constructor object as well. A constructor object would be if you say var album equals new object, for example. Uh, but a constructor object can also be used to create an instance of a previous object. So in a way, you can think of it as uh, creating another object or copying an object, so to speak. So we'll come back to that. Now here, um, this, this, this album object um, has been created, but it's not going to be very useful at this point unless we add some properties. You can also add methods. For right now, let's just go ahead and add a few properties in here. I'll go ahead and give it a title of best jazz music. And I'll separate these by commas. So some, um, one mistake that people uh, make when they're creating object uh, is that they'll separate it by using semicolons, but that would be incorrect. So it's actually a comma. And I create my next one here, which will be jazz. And let me actually correct my spelling. There we go. Now, this is not going to be separated by using an equal sign, even though you can think of the title on line 13 there um, as being a variable name. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a property. And since it's inside of our object that we're declaring, we actually declare it by saying that name, in this case, title. And then we have the colon. Okay, let me add one more. And that will be uh, year, colon. I'll make this a string. You can have different types of um, properties, of course. You could have bo uh, Boolean. You could have functions and so forth. All right. Um, now, in order to uh, get the value here, let me go ahead and make a little more room. In order to re retrieve this value of, let's say, uh, genre, um, we can just simply reference it as a property as you could by getting um, any property or method uh, from the math object, date object, uh, so forth. So here I'll reference album.genre. And you can see that this is actually coming up uh, as, as a code hint here. Let me try that again. And so all of my properties are listed here as code hints. You might also notice there's prototype, which, um, which is inherent within all objects. And we'll talk about that later. Okay, so I'll use genre. And um, if I just do an alert on that, then we'll see that we get jazz. There we go. So that does pop up. Um, and the other thing, the last thing to mention is that these are actually not referenced as numbers. So in arrays, you might get album zero, album one. So here we reference it by saying the actual name. Um, and then these are also called keys. Uh, these really aren't index values in the same way that arrays are. We reference these as keys of or properties of an object.